Breaking news. As predicted, Donald Trump has moved quickly to take advantage of Clarence Thomas's recent concurrence. He is now urging Judge Aileen Cannon to dismiss the Mar-a-Lago espionage and obstruction of justice case against him. Trump's argument hinges on the claim that the special counsel is invalid, improper, and unconstitutional because he was improperly appointed, which he believes should invalidate the entire indictment and prosecution. This move was expected following Justice Thomas's concurrence in Trump versus United States, in which he argued for absolute immunity for official acts. Although Thomas's view was not the majority opinion, it suggested that special counsel Jack Smith's authority was unconstitutional, necessitating the dismissal of the indictment. We expected Trump and his legal team to inform Judge Cannon of this concurrence and apply its reasoning to their motion to dismiss, which she is currently considering. To bring you up to speed, even though the Mar-a-Lago indictment is over two years old, Judge Cannon is only now addressing these issues, likely to Trump's advantage with the timing. To ensure that Donald Trump survives the November 5th election, Judge Aileen Cannon has expressed a keen interest in reviewing whether Jack Smith was properly appointed and whether his special counsel prosecution is valid or invalid. A few weeks ago, she requested further briefing on these issues, indicating that she is taking them seriously. Recently, a new development has emerged in the form of President Donald J. Trump's Notice of Supplemental Authority. In federal court, filing a Notice of Supplemental Authority is a way to highlight a favorable ruling from another court, such as a state Supreme Court or even the U.S. Supreme Court, that could support an ongoing case. In this case, Trump's legal team is using this mechanism to bolster its argument for dismissal of the indictment, Trump's argument centers on the claim that Jack Smith, the special counsel, was not properly appointed and therefore lacks the constitutional authority to prosecute. This argument is supported by a concurrence by Justice Clarence Thomas in Trump v. United States. Justice Thomas's concurrence, while not the majority opinion, suggests that the appointment of the special counsel may violate the Constitution. Specifically, Thomas argued that the special counsel's office was not created by law, as required by Article 2, Section 2, Clause 2 of the Constitution, which mandates that Congress must create federal offices by law. Without such a legal basis, Thomas argued, the special counsel cannot proceed with the prosecution. The supplemental brief filed by Trump's team highlights Justice Thomas's points, arguing that the entire indictment should be dismissed because the special counsel's office lacks the constitutional legitimacy to prosecute a former president. Trump's legal team is essentially saying, we have a pending motion to dismiss arguing that Jack Smith doesn't have the necessary authority, and here's a Supreme Court justice who agrees with us. Justice Thomas's concurrence, dated July 1, 2024, states, I write separately to highlight another way in which this prosecution may violate our constitutional structure. In this case, the Attorney General purported to appoint a private citizen as special counsel to prosecute a former president on behalf of the United States. But I am not sure that the Office of Special Counsel has been created by law, as the Constitution requires. The implication is that if there is no law establishing the Office of Special Counsel, then the prosecution cannot proceed because a private citizen cannot criminally prosecute anyone, let alone a former president. Trump's notice also cites Justice Thomas's reference to Justice Scalia's dissent in Morrison, which criticized the separation of powers concerns surrounding the appointment of special counsels. The memo argues that these concerns are still relevant and that the statutes under which Jack Smith was appointed do not pass constitutional muster. Therefore, these substantive issues should be resolved before the prosecution can proceed. Despite the significance of Justice Thomas's concurrence, it's important to understand its legal weight. In the judicial system, the majority opinion is what establishes the law of the land. Whether the decision is 5, 4, 6, 3, or some other split, the majority opinion is binding. Concurrences and dissents, while providing additional perspectives and arguments, do not have the same precedential value. They can, however, influence lower court judges by providing compelling arguments or highlighting potential problems with the majority opinion. In this case, Trump's legal team is hoping that Judge Cannon will find Justice Thomas's concurrence persuasive enough to influence her decision on the motion to dismiss. 
They are strategically using the concurrence to bolster their argument that the special counsel's prosecution is unconstitutional and politically motivated. While the Supreme Court's majority opinion remains the final word, concurrences like Justice Thomas's can provide valuable insight and context. Trump's team is banking on the possibility that Judge Cannon will seriously consider these arguments and possibly rule in their favor, leading to the dismissal of the indictment against Trump. This move, they hope, will ensure that Trump can navigate the legal challenges ahead of the November 5th election without the burden of this indictment hanging over him. The majority opinion of the court is the binding decision and serves as a precedent that must be followed. While elements of a concurrence may be referenced, they have no precedential value. Concurrences are interpretive and can be persuasive, but their influence is limited by the number of justices who join and other factors. In this particular case, the majority opinion did not directly address the special counsel's powers, appointment, or budget, and implicitly endorsed them by omission. The 6-3 decision suggests that the majority did not find any issues worth mentioning regarding the special counsel's role. This is likely what special counsel Jack Smith's office will argue. The majority saw Clarence Thomas's concurrence but chose not to address or incorporate it, thereby not invalidating the special counsel's prosecution. Concurrences and dissents, like those of Amy Coney Barrett and others, are not the law of the land. Historically, Supreme Court decisions evolve, and what was once a dissent may be recognized as a more accurate interpretation and cited favorably in future decisions. For example, Justice Sotomayor's passionate and intellectually honest dissent in the immunity ruling may be seen in the future as what should have been the majority opinion. Similarly, footnotes in Supreme Court decisions can sometimes have a significant impact on future legal interpretations, even if the main opinion is overlooked. Recent interview with Judge J. Michael Luddig, a prominent conservative and staunch defender of the Constitution. He expressed his deep concern and dismay over the recent immunity decision, which he believes has damaged our democracy. Judge Ludig argues that the Supreme Court majority began with the intention of granting absolute immunity to Donald J. Trump and then crafted a decision to fit that goal. He describes the decision as sloppy and intellectually dishonest, comparing it unfavorably to a first-year law student's moot court brief. Judge Ludig contends that the opinion was written specifically to benefit Donald J. Trump, both as a candidate and as a former president. He criticizes Justices Alito, Gorsuch, Thomas, Roberts, Barrett, and Kavanaugh for effectively creating an imperial presidency immune from prosecution, a situation that extends beyond Trump and affects future presidencies. We will be watching Judge Cannon's next steps closely as Trump's legal team has drawn her attention to Justice Thomas's concurrence criticizing the special counsel's appointment and budget. Judge Ludwig speculates that Judge Cannon may agree with Thomas's view and rule that Jack Smith was improperly appointed, leading to a dismissal of the indictment and a possible appeal to the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the special counsel's office is likely to argue that the majority opinion, which had the opportunity to adopt Thomas's concurrence but chose not to, implicitly upholds the validity of the indictment, differing only on the issue of immunity. I'm John. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.